QuickBooks Online 2022. Bank rules, same customer, different income accounts. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page. In the business view as compared to the accountant view, if you want to change to the accountant view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top and switch to the accountant view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accountant view. Going back over to the bank fee practice file, opening up a couple tabs to put reports in, right click in the tab up top to do so and duplicating back to the tab to the left right clicking again and duplicating again as that is thinking let's jump on over to the sample company file currently in the accountant view looking where the reports are at left hand side reports going back to the biz the bank feed practice file we're in the second tab reports are going to be located in the business overview and then in reports closing the hamburger we're going to be opening up the balance sheet the big balance sheet and we're going to go back up top and do the range change from 01 01 21 to 12 31 21 run it tab to the right and then go into the business overview again this time looking at the reports of course and closing up the hamburger, this time the profit and loss, the P&L, otherwise known as the income statement, with a range change from 01, 01, 21, 12, 31, 21, run it. And then we're going to go back to the first tab, finding our banking information, working on bank rules. We're going to be in the banking area, left-hand side, transactions up top, banking tab, if you were in the accountant view, it would be under the banking, the double banking tab, tab to the left, tab to the top. And then we're going to go back on over, close up the hamburger. We've got our three items up top. We're working on the checking account this time, looking at rules. We need rules. And I'm going to go into the description. I'm going to sort by the description. We're going to be focusing in on Amazon on the deposit side and you might have a situation where the, you have the same customer but you have different things that you're providing to that customer and as they pull in from the bank feeds you might then want to distinguish them in some way shape or form if possible. You could have a similar scenario on the other side with the vendors you might be purchasing different types of things from the same vendor or have some kind of transactions that have a distinguishing factor that you would like to put in place and try to automate it, which can be difficult given the fact that all we have on the bank feed information is the amount and then the description, which often includes something that we can create the vendor or customer from. But oftentimes within this description, and if you, if you don't have the full description, you might want to hit the cog up top and be toggling uh, between the copy bank detail to the memo to make sure that you have all, all of the detail that you could be working with because sometimes QuickBooks will try to like uh, make a smaller smaller memo so it doesn't have all the junk involved in it. But if you're trying to make a more complex rule that's a distinguishing rule, some of these other items like the number on the right hand side and so on could be a differentiating factor that might be indicating like a different location even though it's the same company for example or something like that. And so we have this differentiating factor with the uh, .com versus .co and so on that could help us to then differentiate between the two, put them into two separate accounts if we so choose, or possibly put them into two separate locations by account or possibly by using class tracking. And I'd like to turn on the class tracking now just to imagine that these two items were from say different locations and I can then try to use this differentiating factor even though it's from the same customer to apply a rule out to the different locations. To do that, I'm gonna right click on the tab up top, duplicate the tab, and we're gonna go into the cog up top. We're gonna to go into the cog and see if we can get to our accounting. We want to go to the account and settings on the left-hand side. Go into the advanced on the left-hand side, advanced area, and we want to go into the uh, categories 
I'm going to turn on in the categories the class tracking. I'm just going to leave it at the class tracking. I'm not going to go into the location tracking. We'll go into, but I'll, I'll use the class tracking kind of as a location icon. There are some differences between the two, although they're going to work in a similar fashion. So we're not going to get into a lot of details on the class tracking here, but just show you how you can use it in this way and use it basically as a distinguishing factor. We have the option down here to have one to the entire transaction and one to each row of the transaction, meaning you can kind of split the transaction. So the default here is one to each row. That's why you have a little bit more flexibility with it than uh, the, the track locations area where you don't have that option. But in any case, we're gonna say, we're gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna say, say done and say, do you want to leave uh, without saving? I'm gonna say, do you want to leave without saving? No, I wanna save it. I wanna save it. Let's save it. Oh, here's the save. Save it, then done. So we can actually apply it out. Let's go back to the first tab now. Now I'm gonna be adding some accounts to it. So what I'd like to do is switch to the business view, um, to the accountant view when I add the account. So I'm gonna hit the drop down up top, switch to the accountant view. So there we have it. I'm gonna close up the hamburger again. So now I'm in the accountant view with my bank feed data. And this first one, let's imagine this one, I'm gonna go into it is income and I'm gonna say it's applied to location one. And I can see that because it has the dot CO as, a, as opposed to the COM. Now the next question is, do I wanna just have the customer name just be Amazon and just have all of the different variations in my rules all go to the same customer? You can do that and you can still have different rules with the same customer or Possibly I want to have a distinguishing customer so that uh, so that I can actually sort this data by customer Even though they're the same customer I might want to name them different in my system So I can look at it look it up and possibly sort it in that way That's going to be an internal thing that you can decide what to do I'm going to make it a little bit distinct and I'm going to say this is going to be a customer uh, This customer I already have them both set up as distinct customers So I'm going to say that's the one and it's going to go into the revenue now there's two ways we can distinguish the revenue if it were by location i'm going to do both of them so i might go back up and i might say that i wanted to go into add an account and let's say that i was going to put it into a a let's just call it amazon revenue just for a generic term so i'm going to say it's going to be an income account and i'm going to hit the drop down and we're going to say this is going to be service income and I'm just going to call it Amazon revenue. And I know that's, that's, I tell you not to do that generally to record it by just the name, but just for the generic example to see this difference, but I'm going to put L1 for location one. So that's going to be an indication of the location that it's going to be in. And then I, I'm going to also, so that's going to, I'm also going to assign a class, but not here. We're going to assign a class to it too, which will also indicate that it's going to be location one. So let's save it and close it. And so there we have that. And now I've got this field for the class now, which has now been added consider because I turned on the class tracking. I don't have any classes yet. I'm going to add a class, which is going to be L1. So I'm going to save this. So now it's going to record it into that revenue account for this customer and it's going to have a class on the income statement of l1 so let's go ahead and add it adding that so now if i go into the income statement here's going to be my income statement let's run it and then i'm going to hold control and scroll up again and there's my amazon uh, revenue with l1 indicating location one i'm going to open up another report by right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating that tab going into the reports on the left hand side into the reports and then i'm going to close up the hamburger and then looking for a profit and loss by class so here it is here's a profit that's a profit and loss by customer there it is a profit and loss by class that's the one we want p and l by class a classy p and l we're going to go up top and say this is going to be from 010121 to 123121 run it and so now we've got our classes breaking out l1 uh, being broken out this way as well so those are kind of your options if and that's where classes can come into play you can if you want to break out especially the income statement the into different sections such as by location for example then you can use that you can also start to use that if you wanted to break out 
uh, for a small business, business versus personal, for example, if you're using one file for both or something like that. But in any case, now you can see those two locations, both by the account, because I labeled it L1, and by basically it's breaking out by the class tracking. Obviously the class tracking adds a, another level of complexity because you have to add a class to every transaction for everything to work properly. Otherwise it goes into the non-specified class, which you could do that as well. You can break out only the ones that you want to go into the class, but generally you want to assi assign a class to every transaction. In any case, we won't go into that in more detail there. We're going to go back to the first tab and say, okay, what about the second transaction? It's going to be in location two. That's for this one, amazon.com, uh, which is slightly different. I'm going to go into that one and say, let's say this one is going to go into location two. I'm going to also indicate that it's a slightly different customer. So it's a slightly different customer. This is this is d different than that. Let's say this one's different than that. Let's pull this one over. This one over. That's the that's what we want. Add it. I'm gonna add it because it's not there. There's the customer, and then I'm gonna put this into a new category. New category, which I'm gonna call an income type of account. Income type, and it's gonna be sales and product income and I'm gonna call it the name again Amazon which I told you not to do but I'm gonna do it Amazon L2 Amazon L2 for location 2 save it and close it and then I'm gonna put that into a class this time L2 which I have to add a new class L2 L2 there we have it let's add it add it and then if I go to the normal P and L over here, the normal P and L run it. Now I can I can see that I broke it all. I broke it out by L1 and L2 for the same Amazon revenue. Although I named it, I tried to, I wanted to name it exactly the same name, but I said Amazon and then Amazon revenue. But the point is, it's in L1 and L2. Or you got the class tracking now, where we can run it again and we see that it's broken out and we can see that by the fact that i put it into two separate accounts and broke them out into two separate columns with the help and use of the class tracking so that's how you can get a little bit more specific on the on these types of rules because of course the goal is going to be that we can do as much automating as possible so anytime i have something going into multiple different accounts i want to be able to measure and have the difference between how much detail i want in my accounting and then how I can automate that detail that I would like as, as efficiently as possible and the rules and having them split out or possibly using some of the items in the memo to have some distinguishing factors is one way we can make the rules more efficient.